Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. We are excited to bring you this new series of us taking older YouTube videos, cutting them down to more manageable pieces where the idea is we can take highlights of testing methods and procedures that can be applied to all cars across the board. And of course, we'll bring you the fix too. Enjoy this video. All right, we got a 1996 Jeep that was brought in for a no start. Yesterday we checked the ignition coil for spark, we have no spark. We tried hooking a scan tool up to it. We had no communication yesterday. However, our battery was dead. So we charged the battery all night. We got a nice freshly charged battery. First thing we noticed when we turn the key on, the fuel pumps are running all the time. You can hear it. It's running continuously, which shouldn't happen. The second thing we noticed is that we have a no communication problem. And yes, the key is on. So the next thing that we decided we're gonna do for ease and for speed is to just check a five volt reference circuit on one of the sensors to see if this computer's alive and talking to us. Got my voltmeter connected to ground. I've unplugged the TPS. I'm not worried about doing any TPS testing here. What I'm concerned about is do I have a reference voltage? And I don't even care which pin I'm going to. Again, I'm not jamming this into this connector. You don't wanna spread these pins apart. I see this way too much. I'm just touching on the connector. I got a .07 on that one. I got a .41 on that one. And I got a .09 .009 on that one. So what do we know? No five volt reference, it's not there. This computer is not alive, it's not talking to us. Our five volt reference circuit's not there. So we're looking at the five volt reference circuit on this Jeep. We wanna see what's all tied into it. We put up a wiring diagram. Our map sensor, camshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor, and it's my throttle position sensor. So we're gonna go back under the hood of the car and we're going to measure at the TPS where we were before, our five volt reference, and we're gonna start unplugging these sensors one at a time, and we're gonna hopefully isolate where our short's at. If we have all these sensors unplugged, and we still don't have a five volt reference, then we're gonna go after the fuses and check the fuses next. All right, so I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna unplug the map sensor, just gonna watch my voltage on my meter, and voltage came up a little bit, right? But still not five, okay? So how's my TPS, how's my map? Good. TPS and map are not sorted. There's my cam sensor connector, unplugged, and we're still at what? 0 0.085. Going after the crank sensor now, the connector is right here. Uh, it's on the side of the bell housing on the passenger side. There's a three pin connector. Crank sensor is now unplugged, and what are we reading? 0 0.085. So how are my sensors that share this five volt reference circuit? Not sorted. They're not sorted, that's right. So next step is we're gonna have to check this circuit for a short. This is my five volt reference wire right here. So is this circuit totally isolated right now without unplugged? Is it? Yeah, yeah. So everywhere that that white black wire goes right now is completely unplugged, correct? Yeah. All right, what I'm gonna do is show you how to do an ohm test for a short to ground here. My meter's already connected to ground when I was doing my voltage checks. So I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch my meter to an ohm scale and I'm on an auto ranging ohm scale. So as long as I'm not touching a ground that'll stay like this. This is what it will look like if I touch the ground. I'm just gonna go right to the AC uh, bracket and that would not be a good reading for what I'm doing, okay? That means there's continuity to ground in this circuit. There shouldn't be, it should be OL. So I'm gonna go down to the harness connector. I'm gonna go to my white black wire, which is this one right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back probe this, All right? and take a look at my meter and what do we read is there a short to ground in this white with a black wire circuit no there is not so externally everything's good okay what i found at the bottom of the page which i missed earlier is another five volt supply that i need to address that i missed it 
that either my governor pressure sensor or my vehicle speed sensor could be sorted out doing the same thing too guys. So we have a 5 volt supply coming out on A17 and back down here we have a 5 volt supply coming out on B31. Looks like two separate 5 volt supplies but I want to tell you something guys, internally they're shared. It's the same circuit. If either one of those halves get sorted to ground we have a problem. It'll pull everything down. So rather than crawling under the car and finding the vehicle speed sensor and finding the governor pressure sensor, to save time, I'm going to show you another method. I need to find this wire first. Okay, brown orange right there, violet white right here. So we can uh, we could disconnect this and ohm the circuit, but the problem is ohming the circuit for a short the ground with the sensor still plugged in is we're gonna have some kind of reading. So there's, that's something to consider is, you know, what's the resistance through the governor pressure sensor? What's the resistance through the transmission vehicle speed sensor? And I'm not sure, right? One's a Hall effect and the other one's a pressure sensor and I don't know what the reading should be. And in light of saving time, and I'm not saying always to do this, but I got plenty of harness slack in here, okay? I'm actually gonna cut this wire right here. That's what I'm going to do. And in the process though, before I cut that wire, what we want to do is we want to monitor this reference circuit still. I'm going to cut it and watch the voltmeter. What happened? Nothing. All right, so what I just did, guys, is just save myself about 20 minutes of digging under the car for these connectors. I'll fix that in a, in a lot faster time then I will be crawling underneath the car worrying about the other two sensors. How's my other two sensors on this 5 volt reference circuit? If they were shorted, when I cut that wire, this other circuit would have came back to life, right? Okay, so we didn't have that happen. We'll fix that wire when we're done. That just eliminated the other half of the circuit. Now we gotta do powers and grounds. So I'm gonna T-pin that carefully. Key is on, loaded circuit. I got 10.5 volts on that wire. Granted, the fuel pump uh, is uh, running all the time, so our battery's getting weak here. Uh, let me uh, turn our battery charger up just a little bit. So a little higher, 10.9. So that's a good feed. All right, keys on, I'm reading 0.5 of a volt on this feed. And that is not good, right? What should we have? This is a feed, fuse battery positive. It comes from fuse number 20 in the fuse box, in the power distribution box. There should be voltage there, and there's not. So we're gonna go check fuse number 20, which is where it comes from. Got power on this side, okay? Go over here on this side, I got nothing. So that's my fuse, guys, that we were worried about. Let's uh, pop that fuse out. Clearly, that fuse is blown. Uh, we're gonna change this fuse. We're gonna see what happens. Fuses don't blow for no reason, there's something that blew that fuse. We're gonna have to address that too, but let's get power back to this computer. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna plug this fuse back in. We'll see what happens. As soon as I plugged it in, it popped it. Right, what I need to do now, I guess, is uh, show you guys how to find a short to ground, huh? Um, what I've done is I've installed a, a short circuit tester in into the location of where our fuse was blown. Um, and what we wanted to do before was come over here, unplug the ASD relay, which is this one right here. Here's my ASD. Unplug the ASD and then see if the fuse blew. Well, it uh, didn't blow. I came over, unplugged the ASD, or actually I put a new fuse in and the fuse wasn't blowing anymore. So then we you know, plugged everything back in and, and we uh, plugged all our sensors back in. Our cam, our crank, our TPS, our map. And when we plugged in the crank and actually two of us were doing it cranking TPS at the same time the fuse blew again uh, so I installed a short circuit tester to see if we can isolate where this is but problem now is we need it to happen for us to locate the problem but right now we got power going to our computer if you come back over here you can see I got 5 volts on my 5 volt reference wire that I did not have before our fuel pump is not running all the time like it was and then there's my 12 volt feed that was nothing. And you can see that, you know, we got 12 volts on that wire now. All right, we're, we're all over the place with this car. We're showing procedures. 
Uh, we discussed the 5 volt reference circuit. Um, we uh, showed you how to find a sort in a 5 volt reference. Showed you how to check powers and grounds on a computer. Uh, what we're fighting right now is a power feed, blown fuse. We have a circuit tester installed. We mapped it out on a diagram. We found that this is the ASD circuit, auto shutdown relay, which feeds power to the injectors, feeds power to the ignition coil, uh, feeds power to, I think, the purge solenoid, and uh, a couple other components we're going to need to look. Oh, the O2 heaters. Oh, and, and the alternator, too, as well. And uh, what we need to do is a good visual inspection. In particular, where we want to look is O2 heaters, exhaust, a melted wire on the exhaust, maybe the alternator. Let's look at the harness real close. Unfortunately, we really can't use our short circuit tester and follow needle bounces and find out where our short's at because it's not here right now. So we're going to use the scan tool to help us and we're gonna go under ATM test and you're gonna turn on the auto shutdown relay for me. And go ahead and turn it on. And what that's gonna do is energize the circuit and it's gonna pulse it on and off. If you listen, you can hear it. Okay, it's an on off type test. So what we're gonna do is a visual and now that the circuit's energized, we're gonna go, we're gonna wiggle some harnesses and see if we can make this thing trip and the fuse to blow, which is gonna kick this little red light on right here. So we're gonna watch this guy and uh, we're gonna go through the harness. My O2 heaters for sure. Um, it was it was interesting when we plugged the crank sensor back in that, that this fuse blew. Um, so I definitely wanna focus on this harness back here. And again, what we're looking at too is, is we're looking for this guy to, uh, to light, which will tell me that I I got a blown fuse. O2 heaters are down further for the exhaust, so that's something else I want to look at. I'm going to come around the other side. I'm just doing a visual, looking at harnesses, but I do have a direction where I'm going. I know what circuit I'm dealing with. So I'm trying to eyeball my O2 down here now, which is by the exhaust. if this thing would short while we're filming. Shine that right there on that exhaust pipe right there. So I didn't touch it yet. Let me get my light up here. I didn't touch it yet, but I have a wire laying on an exhaust pipe right there. You see it? This harness, and guess what? Yeah. See, the, see the green with an orange wire? That green with an orange wire is my guy. That's the circuit that this ASD is on, up hey. right there. That was laying on the exhaust pipe. That's nice. And we got multiple wires. Wow. Um, that's our problem. Uh, yeah, and they're melted together. What does that go to? We need to figure out. Um, anytime you have, not only, sign that on that for me. Not only is that a copper to ground, short to ground, but it's also copper to copper. Those bare wires touching each other. That's our problem with this vehicle. We fix those wires and get those straightened out, get them taped up, get them cut, whatever we need to do, uh, we'll be able to get this vehicle running again. Okay, just a final review on short to ground testing when you have a blown fuse. Looking for location, of course we can use a inductive meter if your short is there, but if it's not there, you need to locate it really with a visual inspection. And one of the things that I said again was heat and vibration is where you're going to find your problem. In our case, that knowledge put us to the O2 sensor and toward the O2 sensor. And that's what this harness is for. This is my O2 sensor harness connector. There's my O2 sensor connector. That is a four wire heated O2 and this harness that's burnt runs down to that. And that is part of our ASD relay circuit. This green with an orange tracer comes from the ASD relay, feeds power on the O2 heater circuit, as well as multiple other components. And that is our short to ground,
caused our fuse to blow, eliminated power to half the computer, caused the computer to give us a no communication, also no five volt reference. So we're gonna take his harness apart, cut these bad wires out, fix it up. We should be good to go. And those look real nice guys. You guys did a good job on that. So what we wanna do now is let's, let's get this whole thing wrapped up in electrical tape, put the plastic conduit back on and get it tucked back down behind where it's supposed to go and we should be good to go. Nice job guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to tell you that the original footage from this is from 2011. It's one of the first videos that I ever did. It was actually a three part series and we summed it all up for you guys. And one of the things I've been hearing from you guys for the past nine years is you never got to hear the Jeep crank over. And I'm with you. We need to hear this Jeep crank over. The cool thing about that is it was a 96 Jeep, four liter. Guess what we have right behind me? A 96 Jeep, four liter. So here we go, we're gonna crank it over. Listen, it's real special. <laughs> I know a lot of you know that that Jeep was gonna run. It was early in my video filming career, so I didn't know, okay? It runs, it cranks, it runs. It is a confirmed fix. So just a little humor there with that. I know I just didn't wanna hear for the next nine years, hey, I wanted to hear that Jeep crank over. I promise you guys, it was fixed. Two more quick things. Number one, the procedures in this video apply to all cars all years, all makes and models. From the dawn of computer systems till 2020, when you're dealing with a shorted reference circuit, computer powers and grounds, the procedures I showed in this video all apply. Windows shut down. <laughs> as far as direction goes in this video, yes, we did attack this problem incorrectly. We should have started with fuses. Uh, the reason I did not, I was teaching a class and I really felt it was important to include the five volt reference shorted testing in that because that's the one nobody knows. Everyone knows how to check a fuse if the car doesn't crank and the computer's not communicating. What do you do when the fuses are good? What you do when the fuses are good and you have no five volt reference is you do exactly what I showed in this video as far as isolating the circuit. Here's a quick clip of a shorted map sensor and what it looks like when you unplug a sensor that is actually shorted pulling the reference down. I'll show you one more time plugging the map in what it does to that five volt ref. As soon as you plug the map in, there you go, shorts the ref out. So that gives you a little bit of insight to how highly protected I think these reference circuits are. That video will put in a link in the description and maybe put a card right above me. Nope, wrong way right above me yep <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we can you can watch that full video if you'd like to it was on a Honda element with a shorted map sensor one other piece is I have since learned from 2011 it's 2020 now that you can check a reference circuit without unplugging sensors and it is actually a faster way to do it at least maybe preliminary you still need to unplug sensors if you find a short but you can do overall resistance measurements from the connector at the computer without cutting wires. And I have another video I wanna refer you to where I'm teaching that procedure. It's right here, bad engine computer. Uh, there was a two part series. It was on a cobalt where students connected a ground wire uh, for the block to the starter battery post and cooked the engine computer. So pretty cool one, but I'm showing procedures in that video on checking the reference circuit. Just something to point out on this 96 Jeep, the harness for that one that was messed up, it ran down this way. Look where the harness is supposed to go. So that means that someone probably changed the power steering pump and didn't put the harness back in the right spot. And that was the cause of that. Oh, and by the way, my students at Rosedale Tech, props to them for helping me with that car. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the highlights of this case study. If you have any questions about the testing methods being shown, or you'd like to learn more about my process, click on the link in the description for the full length video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and more importantly, make sure you click on that bell icon to get notifications of all new uploads.